Well, good morning, Kent City Baptist Church family. <clears throat> it's a lovely, rainy Thursday morning, and I decided to break up my umbrella and go for a little stroll around the house. Hope you all are well, and please know how much we miss you guys. Uh, so the last couple weeks, I've been talking about knowing God, and we talked about two weeks ago on Thursday about the beauty of God uh, his fingerprints in creation. And then last week we talked more about knowing God through his word specifically. And so this week and next week, I want to consider what are some things that hinder us from knowing God or knowing God well. And the verse that I want to focus on this morning is from Paul's second letter to Timothy. Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, what scripture is useful for. And he's telling Timothy to hold on to the truths that Timothy has learned since he was a child, uh, that he was grew up knowing, and, and Scripture was a big part of that. But then he tells, Paul writes to Timothy and tells him that all Scripture is breathed out by God and is useful for training, for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And there's four ideas there of what Scripture is useful for. The first two really center around what we should believe. For teaching us what is right to believe. We look to God to know what is true. We look to God to know what we can absolutely depend on. And we look to his word for that. But then the second part is for rebuking. And that's really the idea of correcting wrong belief, of knowing what not to believe. And that's incredibly important as well. We really need both of those things. We not only need to know what to believe, but what not to believe. So that we will not be, stake, be mistaken in the most important things that we know about God, about his world, about humanity, what our problem is. And so those first two that Paul mentions really center around what we should believe. Then he says, for correcting and for training in righteousness. And these last two really center around what does correct behavior look like? So correcting is something any of us parents spend a lot of time doing. Uh, <laughs> correcting wrong behavior. Seems like there's been a lot of that in the Miller household this week. And then the last one is training in righteousness. And that's knowing, again, not just what not to do, but what we should do. What does living rightly and wisely in God's world look like? I was laughing this week because our daughter Anastasia is just about 10 months old. And she's in this phase right now where anything that fits in her mouth, she's putting it in there. So yesterday, Christina brought her into the office or in the my temporary workspace that I'm trying to use as an office from home and asked me to watch Anastasia. So I held her for a couple minutes. Then I set her down on the floor and she smiles at me. She grabs something that barely fits in her mouth and tries to shove it in there. And I was like, really kid? Like just everything has to go right into your mouth. And she, she was so pleased with herself. And yet if I were not watching her, she could very well choke and we could have severe problems. And I was kind of laughing, thinking about how much are we like that with God, with what he's told us we should do, the way we should live, and we just don't want to. Sometimes we don't know how bad the things that we think we want are for us. Sometimes we don't know how good the things that God has for us really are. And often we are like children who don't know what we should do or shouldn't do or what we should believe or what we shouldn't believe. And so this morning, based on 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, I want to suggest to you that two things that really hinder us from knowing God are, first of all, a lack of humility, and second of all is a lack of repentance. A lack of humility is basically from those first two, for, for teaching us and for rebuke. If we show up to Scripture and you've already got it all figured out, or you're just looking for something to confirm what you already believe or what you already think to be true, you're not really coming to God's word 
with humility and you're not coming to it saying, what should I believe? How should what I do believe be corrected or um, further expanded or how do I better understand that? You're coming to scripture not as a student to learn, as a creator desiring to worship and know your creator better. You're coming to it and you've already got it all figured out. And that's incredibly dangerous. The, the second way is with repentance. And this again centers more on our behavior. And we can be greatly hindered from knowing God well when we're not choosing to live a life of repentance. When we are set in what we want to do and we're basically going to ignore the portions of scripture that don't tell us what we want to hear. And so I would really like to encourage you today, this week, as you're focusing on what should I believe, what is true, what's the right thing to do, go to scripture, go to God's word and have that be the loudest voice in your head, the thing that you can absolutely depend on through thick and thin. What we should believe right now about the world, scripture has answers for us. And I really appreciated Pastor Derek. I just see, see he's watching. Hi, everyone. Derek, thanks for joining us. Yesterday, he mentioned, you know, God's not surprised by this. He's not looking down just in shock and not knowing what to do. God's word gives us very clear instructions for what we should believe about him and what we should look like. And so honestly, we have a lot of opportunities right now. As we're seeking to know God, as we're seeking to figure out what does living rightly look like amid COVID-19, what does that mean for our church, all of those things, go to scripture, go to God's word. It is useful for those things and come with humility and come with repentance. And my prayer for you guys is that you would approach his word with humility, that you would look to the Holy Spirit who has breathed out the words of God and that those would be the most life-giving words for you right now. And my prayer is that you would not be hindered in knowing God well because of a lack of humility or that you would not be hindered by knowing God well because of a lack of repentance, but that every time you open the pages of scripture that you will be saying, God, what do I need to hear today about who you are? What do I need to know about how I ought to live in your world? And if you're bold enough, ask God to give you opportunities to put those things into practice because I guarantee that even just today in your own family, uh, through encouraging people who you're unable to see in person right now, you will have ample opportunities. And so that's my prayer for you guys today, that you would know God well through knowing his word well, and that you would be, as a congregation, that we would all be people who are marked by humility and repentance. Towards that end, in humility, uh, we as pastoral staff continue to ask for your prayers, for us, for our church, for what's wise for us to do. We're really weighing that out heavily. That's been mentioned as well, and so hopefully we'll have some uh, more concrete news for you all soon. My umbrella's not doing a good job because I can see my phone's getting very, very wet. Um, <laughs> so please keep us in your prayers for that. We love you all. We miss you all. I hope you stay very dry today, and I hope that you will go to God's Word and know Him well and worship Him well because of who He is and what He's done. So may God conform you to the image of His Son more and more each and every day. And may even these difficult circumstances be an opportunity for you to grow in your Christ-likeness. Next week, I'm going to wrap up this little short series of Knowing God and talk about a couple other hindrances and one of my favorite small passages in Scripture that you've probably never heard a whole sermon on, and I promise I won't preach a whole sermon on it, but hopefully you'll join us there for our last installment of Knowing God and what hinders us from knowing God well. We love you all and miss you all. Until next time, bye-bye.